Oh, what? No. I think they just realized that they were going to do what Rainbow Six has already done, so they gave up. What? Both are minor in detail. But how the operators look? I mean, have you seen the guy from the trailer shooting the taser? It looks like Fuse from R6. Okay, no. Fuse is a Russian, and the guy on the right is an American. Fuse is not fully customizable. The guy on the right is fully customizable. I could turn him into a girl if I wanted to. And since when did Fuse use a taser? Like, what? So there seems to be a misconception about Ready or Not. People seem to think that the game is ripping off Siege in some way, or it's some kind of sequel to Siege. Listen, I get it. There's not a lot of people that have heard of the SWAT series, so I get why people would gravitate towards Rainbow Six Siege, you know, because it's the modern one. What people have to understand is that Ready or Not is completely different from Rainbow Six Siege. For one, it caters to the players that are more tactical when they like to play. Siege has some tactics, but it's not going to amount to the wealth that Ready or Not has. Siege caters to the more casual audience. This comment, for instance, I find it very intriguing. I've been from COD and I dropped it for Battlefield and recently started playing RS6. That comment has some really bad English, so that's really all you need to know. But the point is, is that Siege is basically like what my friend Nox said. Rainbow Six Siege is an arcade shooter where it ridiculously pitches the world's most powerful counter-terrorist units against one another like some warped Hollywood disaster with a senseless plot. Siege basically takes the concept of search and destroy from Call of Duty and makes it into an entire game. Check them out by the way. Now I think I would be lying if I say I didn't like the game because I do have over 400 hours and I have about 50 videos of the game. I've had fun with it but it's really not the game that I wanted. The game that I wanted was more along the lines of Rainbow Six Vegas 2 and when I saw Rainbow Six Siege at E3 I was like oh my god look at how dark and gritty that looks. Holy cow. So from the get-go Siege is basically a lie because this is nothing like what we got. We ended up with a MOBA. Oh my god, I can already hear it now. Oh my god, you suck with ash! I want no, a fuse! I want a fuse! Glass is too no, fucking you OP. Suck it. He no, needs to be nerfed no. right now. It's like I'm playing fucking League of Legends again. Because they're heroes. They're heroes. Or operators, as most people call it. In my eyes, it's basically an excuse not to add customization to the game. Because in Rainbow Six Vegas 2, you were able to completely customize your character. That's what the leveling system was for, because after a certain level, you would unlock something so that you could put on your character. It's something that games almost don't even have nowadays. I mean, what's the point of even having a leveling system in Siege? You don't unlock anything. I mean, really, the only thing that you need is the ranking system and the money, because the money is what really gets you the accessories. I'm just getting sick and tired of arcade games. I, I just want something a little more realistic. This is why I switched over to Squad, and I thought that the days of playing as a police officer were numbered. But then I found the SWAT series. Mesmerized I was. I have never seen this series before until just recently as I played a very underrated series. A thought came to my mind. Rainbow Six Siege could have been this game, but damn, they missed their chance. This series is something that I could get into, but the problem is that it's, you know, it's outdated. You know what I'm saying? And then my friend told me about a newer version of the game, but it was being made by a different company in a completely different name. Ready or not. Oh. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, why am I calling this game arcadey? I mean, it does have some tactical stuff, and yeah, that's true, but see, the difference between SWAT 4 and Siege is that if you get hit in SWAT, your guy begins to limp because he has a bullet in him. Whereas in Siege, you're basically still running around even though you got shot. Vegas 2 also had a system where you could actually, you know, hug a wall and see what was over it. Now see, that actually felt tactical to me. And Siege could have implemented that into this game, but instead we get this. Call of Duty Ghost. Listen, you can like this game if you want to, but I'm just not there with it anymore. All my life I've basically played nothing but arcade games, and this one is just the straw that broke the camel's back. But see, I think the biggest reason is that every time I go into the goddamn game, it doesn't load my fucking profile, so I have to reset all my goddamn attachments, and it's really fucking annoying. I have to skip the goddamn intro. The game doesn't fucking remember me, so it's gonna send me a shitload of messages. Yep, here they come. Look at all these fucking notifications. I get this every time that I get into the goddamn game, even though I'm not new to the fucking game. It tells me I have to reset all my fucking...
Uh, uh, I have to reset all my fucking hollow sites. What kind of horseshit is that? So I'm just gonna lump this game with all these other games and then, you know, just keep that away from me for a while. I want to thank everybody for taking the time to watch the video. This video wasn't to piss off anybody. This was just the reason why I'm not going to be playing it anymore. So if I offended you, I'm sorry. I hope that I can catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Stick with it, bro. Stick with it, bro. This game is going to be the successor to... Mm -hmm.